Hi, I'm Cash, and welcome back to Cash Talks Football, where I break down all the goals scored in the Premier League. Using my over 20 plus years coaching experience, coaching all over the world. Uh, today, we're uh, doing West Ham against the Liverpool. And I've um, been uh, getting some nice comments about uh, how bad Trent Alexander Arnold's defending is. Now, here's the funny thing the same way that Trent didn't defend that header against Everton the other day is exactly the same way Gakpo doesn't defend the header here. It is exactly the same. Now, this is interesting because you know what's going to happen. You've got a player with his hand up, another player with his hand up, another player with his hand up, so they're going to score three goals. That's how it works in the Premier League. I always tell you, as soon as someone's hands go up, telling somebody else what to do, chances are there's a goal going to go in. Now, this is interesting because this is the uh, Jared Bowen. He scores it here. He's a small little wee chap. And he gets the run on it. Like, Gatpo's supposed to be marking him here. Clearly, he's not goal side. Well, I'm not sure if he is because they're doing this. Um, look, I, I don't agree with the way that they're, they're setting up their, their defence, to be fair, uh, from the corners. Um, Allison needs to be back a little bit further. There's a couple of other issues. Uh, but, yeah, we're just going to talk about the actual main one. And it comes down to desire on the header. Well, if you've ever played at any sort of level, you know players that are really up for the challenge and players that really aren't. And you don't have players that really aren't up for the challenge marking their goal scorers. Now, quite frankly, it's normally Antonio. He's the one that you really want to be worried about in these uh, set pieces situation. But when, when you see the body shape and the position of this um, challenge, it's exactly the same as Trent's lack of desire for Everton. Gap posed to blame this time. Let's show you. Here we go. As you can see, his body shape's wrong. He's not really... Um, goal side of him and as he jumps up he's kind of half turning and really half arsing it he doesn't have his eyes on the ball and it's just an easy goal for him to go uh you know to put in now yeah they do play a little bit of a short corner to change the angle to drop the ball in but liverpool defensively are just totally and utterly switched off just gone not really worried doing there eh, that's all right let's talk about stuff no they're not serious enough and that's what's cost them there like if you're a true Liverpool fan and you actually think about where you were last season, if you say you'd be challenging for the title compared to their season last season, you'd probably say you're having a laugh. We're not good enough. And then they're not quite good enough this year to be where they are. I think they've overachieved. They've done pretty well. If they had a couple of other referee decisions against them, like in that Man City game, I think it was a Tottenham game, they got robbed as well. They might have done better. And they might have been further further ahead when the um, when they started the wheel started coming off the bus. But it, it clearly has now. And you can see a lot of the players are kind of checking out and just starting to blame each other. And when the starts to set in it's called quicksand if you know the analogy of quicksand of in football the harder you try the worse you, you get sucked in you've got to try to stand still and get your momentum back and it's the one of the hardest things to do when you start going down down a path trying to get your momentum back i don't think liverpool can wait for the end of the season it can't come soon enough let's get on to the next goal this is pretty shocking defender, really, from West Ham. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That they've just got don't have enough numbers back. Liverpool bring the numbers forward, and to be fair, like um, this little wee chappy here, Diaz doesn't really do much, but he does. I don't know how they let this guy Andy Robinson in the box unmarked. Let's just move it for a little bit. Bum, 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 bum. Here he is. He's unmarked in the box. You've got two v two v one here again. They're not defending properly. He's not doing his job. But they're letting this guy just receive the ball. And it's one of those, uh, his first touch like bobbles it up and he just strokes it in with his foot. But there's nobody from West Ham. Look, look at these players here. There's nobody anywhere near any of these players. They've pretty much got the free run of what, to do anything they want. When he has his little touch, bump, bounces up and just smashes it into the neck box and gets himself a goal. 1-1. One, one. Liverpool come from behind again. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Trent problem because you can see it right here. Right Here's Trent in centre midfield. Here's Andy Robinson. Now, when Trent was actually playing really well, he would have been over here. You can see there's nobody over here for Liverpool. Now, people are going, oh, you want him on the ball more, so you're putting him in centre midfield. No, that's not really true. Why he's in centre midfield and he's making this inside run is because he's terrible defensively. And if he's up here all the time and he gets caught out, it's really, really obvious. If he's there, yeah, you do want him on the ball. Yeah, he's, he's, he you know, can pick a pass and do a thing. But he's not getting found out defensively. Now, when he was playing up here and um, him and uh, Andy Robinson in Liverpool were flying, winning the league and doing all those great things, they had the most assists in the Premier League and maybe Kevin De Bruyne was floating around with them. These two players were putting in crosses and, um, and getting assists for fun because they could both stay out here. Because their midfield was like Jeannie Wijnaldum, Jordan Henderson, actually I think it was the other way around, uh, James Milner and Fabinho. And all of them worked really, really hard and they didn't try to go forward and create goals. They held. So when these players were high and wide out here, the uh, Robinsons and the um, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnolds, 
they didn't really get caught out much because they always had a Henderson coming into cover for them, or they always had a James Milner coming into cover for them, so they could stay up here high and wide. The whole structure of the team has now changed. And if you look, look, look at how many bodies are in this midfield, and this is where you've got Trent trying to thread balls and make passes. The whole structure of the team isn't quite there yet. Klopp hadn't finished off this new transition with all these new players in the midfield. And that's really what's hurting them. Right, well, as a coach, this is what you'll say to your player, right? So you'll say something like, oh, Trent, we want you on the ball more, so we want you to move in midfield. But what you're really doing is going, mm, we can't afford you up here on the wing anymore because we don't have the midfielder that's going to cover and co cover and do your doggies. So I don't want you going that far up, so I'm going to give you a role to slip in and, and come in here. And people go, oh, but it's what John Stones does at City. No, it's not. It's completely, utterly different. John Stones is a centre-back. They squeeze it differently with a three, and they let um, uh, Carl Walker go off because he's got all the pace and he can defend in the world. So it's a completely different setup. Um, yeah, so let's just get on to the goal. Coming in from the corner, I kind of like what West Ham are doing here, except for I wouldn't have this player here. I'd have him a little bit more here. So he's covering between these two players here, right? Guys on the back stick, fantastic. Covering that space because the keeper has gone near post, so the whole area of the goal is covered. Great job. Now we get a little Gakpo here. He peels off, kind of loses his um, defender. But it's one of those goals that's going to go in. Sometimes when you just hit a ball and it hits four of the... Um, West Ham players, it finds its way into the goal. A little bit of a flick header, drops to um, Gakpo here, who gets a good strike on it, but hits one, two, it's going to hit three, four, the goalkeeper, and end up into the back of the net. That sometimes happens in football, and then a really reason that has happened is because he's hit the ball hard enough. If he doesn't hit it hard enough, the keeper's probably catching that, but he does, and Liverpool get themselves a goal. This here from the West Ham player says it all. When you get a goal scored on you like that, you have to laugh. Okay, as much as football's your job and it's serious and all these other things, sometimes when something happens and you've got no control over it, have a giggle. Because you know what? It's kind of funny. It's hit four of your own players and it's gone into the net box. So chuckle about it. Let's look at the next goal. Okay, this happens quite a lot with youth players, right? Um, I'll see if I'm saying this guy's name wrong. Look at Kwanzaa. So when you're a younger player... It's funny, and this, sound, this sounds one of the dumbest things ever when I say it, but it happens. Your feet don't move. You get caught in a scenario sometimes, and your feet don't move. And this is what's happened here. All he has to do is keep fighting with this guy. That's what he's doing here, and he gets caught ball watching, right? As he's watching that ball, watch. Goes, dun, 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 dun. The player keeps moving. He doesn't move. He just keeps watching the ball. And that's why where he ends up failing here. Just keep defending the guy. Just keep fighting with him. Now, if you're being hypercritical... Kwanzaa is let uh, first off, Van Dijk has got pulled completely out of position. Don't know what he's doing over there. There's two players here to deal with this ball. Oh my God, I didn't even see that. You've got two players here and you've got your centre-back, who's supposed to be, you know, in my opinion, the most overrated centre-back in the world. He should be here. Kwanzaa should be here and keeping Trent out over here. That's where it should be. He shouldn't have been sucked over here because there's no need. There's enough Liverpool players to deal with this ball. There's two players there. He shouldn't be anywhere near that. And... To be fair, if, if you're Jared Burrowing and you see um, Van Dyke's out here, you're probably going to put the ball in the box because Trent might just help help you get a goal. So as he puts it in, watch what happens. Dosh, now he's completely and utterly lost. This is where Trent needs to come in and attack that ball because it's behind Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa's made the initial mistake because he's let him go behind him and let him bully him. But remember, you're only responsible for the space in front of you, not the space behind you. But technically, Kwanzaa is responsible for the space behind him because he's let him run in behind him here. And he gets himself a goal.